Good evening. Tonight we will be counting down three serial killers who nearly got away with it. If you enjoy, please give the video a like and let me know. Do you think you would get caught? Or maybe your CSI programs have made you into quite the evil mastermind. Number 1. Ted Bundy was described by most as handsome, charismatic and charming. For a number of years, he even had former law enforcement officers and renowned true crime author Anne Rule fooled, having worked closely with her at a suicide hotline and becoming friends. She would later go on to write the infamous book, The Stranger Beside Me, detailing her account with him and all of his crimes. Theodore Robert Bundy confessed to killing 36 women across several states, starting in Washington and moving east to Utah, Colorado and closer to his demise to Florida from 1974 to 78. The exact number of his victims is unknown. In a memoir written by one of his vendors, John Henry Brown, he recalls a time Bundy disclosed to him that the number of his victims was somewhere near 100. He could have probably remained a free man and lived under the radar had it not been for his thirst for homicide. On the night of January 14th, 1978, he broke into a Chi Omega sorority house at Florida State University in, in Tallahassee, Florida, and attacked four young women, killing two, Karen Chandler and Kathy Kleiner, both 21, survived. Margaret Bowman, 21, was bludgeoned to death and Lisa Levy, 20, was strangled. Almost a month later, he abducted and killed 12-year-old Kimberly Leach. Bundy's killing spree and murderous rampage came to a halt a few days later when he got pulled over for a minor traffic violation. Again, he could have gotten away with it. He was apprehended and the most compelling evidence against him was that found in the Chi Omega house including testimony from witness and physical damnation of evidence. Had he been able to contain his bloodlust, perhaps Bundy would have gotten away with murder. He was convicted on July the 24th, 1979 for the Bowman and Levy murders and sentenced to death. For the Leach murder, he was also given a death sentence by electrocution. Number 2 Dennis Radar known as the BTK killer for his preferred method of binding, torturing and killing. Dennis Radar committed a series of murders, killing a total of 10 people in Wichita, Kansas between 1974 and 1991. Radar's MO included the thrill of the hunt. He is said to have wandered around the city until zeroing in on his target. Once doing so, Radar would stalk his victims and learn their routines. Once ready for the attack, he would break into their homes, cut off their phone lines and bind, torture and kill. He carried a gun to initially intimidate his victims and usually tied them up and killed them either by strangulation or by suffocation with plastic bags. He would take articles from the murder scene as mementos for his personal collection. Sometimes this included women undergarments. Radar confessed to getting sexual gratification from committing their killings and he masturbated at a couple of the crime scenes. The BTK killer began his infamous cat and mouse game with the police and the press in October of the same year when he began to seek notary by placing a letter inside of a book at the Wichita Public Library, anonymously confessing to the Otero murders and giving a grisly and detailing description. He made a phone call to the Wichita Eagle to make the existence of the letter known. Inside this letter, he was to give himself the name for what he would be known by for the rest of his life when he wrote the code words for M will be bind them, torture them, kill them. B T K. Radar's greedy desire for fame is what would ultimately do him in and get him caught. Throughout the years, he taunted police with letters and phone calls, the police department and to the media. Oftentimes, this included description accounts only the killer could have given, photographs of the murders, driver license of the victims, or even items from the crime scenes. Though it had been years since he had fed his homicidal lust, in 2004, Radar began a series of communication with the local media. 
probably because of the lack of attention he had been getting since the case of the BTK killer had gone cold. This is what would eventually lead to his arrest. Radar could have literally gotten away with murder had he not committed the idiotic mistake of trusting the police's answers when they told him a floppy disk could not be traced to him when he asked if it would be safe to send him some writings that way. The authorities were led to his church thanks to the date on the disk, and soon after, to him. Radar is currently in Kansas Al Torodo Correctional Facility serving 10 consecutive life sentences for his crimes. Number 3 Dennis Nilsson is a Scottish serial killer known to have defiled, murdered and dismembered 15 young boys and men between the years of 1978 and 1983 in London. Nilsson would target homosexual, homeless men or students whom had been picked up at bars and encountered randomly, and would invite them to his house. He would lure them in with offers of food and alcohol, often wanting them for sex and company. He would first ply them with alcohol and once passed out or unable to move or defend themselves, he would strangle his victims to death. If unsuccessful, he would resort to drowning them in a sink or bathtub. He really did invite them over wanting company, even if it was post-mortem. After his murders, Nelson would engage in strange rituals in which he bathed the bodies, cleaned the young men, and even shaved them. He would sometimes apply makeup on their faces and clothe them. He says to have cohabited with them and engage in conversations with the dead victims. He would perform sexual acts on all the bodies and masturbate on them. After enjoying their company for a period of time, Nelson would move on to dissect their bodies and dismembering them. He would do so by butchering them in his kitchen. He started his killing spree at an address at Melrose Avenue and here he would bury the remains in the garden or burn them in a bonfire. After moving to the Muswell Hill district, he had to resort to other methods such as flushing parts down the toilet, boiling and cooking other parts, and stuffing some in bags and placing them under the floorboards. A smell started to emit in his building caused by a blockage of the sewage system. Since he had been flushing body parts down the toilet like someone would a dead goldfish, either out of stupidity, being oblivious to risk, or confidence, Nelson had the audacity to call the waste company Dino Rod and complain about the smell. The employee who responded to the call discovered bones and flesh like substance upon opening a drain cover. It was decided the following day a full inspection would be made of the pipes and the police would be called for further investigation. That night, Nelson was seen by neighbours attempting to cover his tracks by cleaning an actual human remains from the pipe. The next day, it reported that he told a co-worker, If I don't come in tomorrow, I'm either dead or in jail. After inspecting other sections of the pipe, the bones of a human hand were found. Nelson was questioned by police in his apartment where they noticed a fell odour coming from the bags of remains he kept beneath the floorboards. When asked about the smell, he calmly confessed. Nelson was sentenced to life in prison without eligibility for parole for at least 25 years. If he hadn't moved and continued to dispose of his victims the way he did while living in Melrose Avenue and burning them or burying them, if he hadn't flushed body parts down a toilet, if maybe he would have thought to clean the pipes out before calling the waste company, and if he hadn't complained about the sewage system he himself destroyed, Perhaps he would have gotten away with it. Thank you all for listening. If you enjoyed and you are new to the channel, please subscribe. It would mean a lot. Also, if you already subscribed, let me know what you thought of this video. We'd love the feedback and I hope you all have a pleasant evening.